Hello and welcome to our lecture about an FIR filter on an FPGA. In the first video we had a look at the algorithm development and we saw that we want to have a separable filter for horizontal and vertical processing, that we want to have seven taps and we also determined the filter coefficients. In this video we will have a look at the circuit structure and the VHDL code. For the filter implementation, we use the direct form as you find it in the literature. The input signal is delayed by six stages. Then uh, you have seven values that you multiply with the coefficients. Two coefficients are zero, so no multiplication required here. You sum up these values and uh, divide the sum with 32. In our design, we have two filter stages for vertical and horizontal filter. The vertical filter requires a line memory for one line delay and the horizontal filter uses a flip-flop stage for one pixel delay. Our implementation will be a design for a 720p video signal. These are 1280 by 720 pixels and this gives a clock frequency of about 75 megahertz. Input and output pixel are 8-bit RGB and this is something that is available in our FPGA Vision Remote Lab with Cyclone 4 and Cyclone 5 FPGA. Then you can implement the architecture with the following block diagram. You have the image input, you delay for the vertical filter the input with the line memories, LM, and give these values to the filter arithmetic. In a second stage you use flip-flop stages for your delay and again you have a filter arithmetic and get the output of the filter. From the architecture we can then do the VHDL design and we start top down. Our top level is called sharp VHD and the arithmetic is in the submodule sharp slice. And we use three instances of this submodule, one instance for red, green and blue. And uh, there's another module on the top level that is sharp control that is required for delaying the sync signals of the video signal. In the module sharp slice, we then have a submodule for the line memory. We have six instances there called LM and another submodule for the filter arithmetic. The output of the first filter arithmetic is then given to flip-flop stages and again to the filter arithmetic. The filter arithmetic is called sharp arith the line memories sharp line mem. Input signal, intermediate signal and output signal are in 8-bit because that is the resolution from the octave simulation of the algorithm. Then we do bottom-up design and description of submodules. For the line memory we use an array for the memory as recommended by the FPGA supplier and the synthesis tool will recognize this description and use block ramps for our FPGA. For the filter arithmetic, there is a naming convention for the input signals. So M3 means the filter tap minus 3, P1 means plus 1 and so on. For the arithmetic, we have to consider that negative coefficients in the filter function can lead to negative results. And also the positive coefficients are in some larger than 1, so there might be an overflow with results larger than 255. So there is a limiter required. Please have a look at the code. It's available at our project website on the link you find here. For an FPGA implementation, you can use our free remote lab. This means you can perform experiments with real hardware. You perform synthesis on your local computer with the Quartos Design software and uh, more information about software versions and available FPGAs is found in our FAQ. One important thing to consider, don't forget the constraints for the I.O. pins. Before we have a look at the implementation, there's one final remark. For the image borders, the design uses a simplification to keep the design easier. And this simplification has two effects. First thing is that the border pixels are filtered together with the start of one line or the end of the previous line. So for 
the pixels at the border, end of line and start of line are mixed. Second simplification is that the FAR filter delays the output for several sampling cycles. And uh, this delay is not compensated for the vertical fi filter, so the output is shifted by three lines. This is done yeah, to make the design a little bit easier for you to understand. And it's also an exercise so that you can fix both simplifications. Now we perform the experiment on the FPGA remote lab. I reserved the Cyclone 5 experiment for five minutes. Now I select the test image I want to use. I upload the test image. Then I choose the binary from FPGA synthesis. Again, I upload it and now I start the experiment. So now our server programs the FPGA and uh, what you see here is real time. So this is real processing done on the remote lab. After a short time, the output image is visible and you can see it looks fine. It's working. You can enlarge the image to have a closer look where you can also store the file on your computer. Here you see the simplification we talked about. Lines from the bottom are shifted to the top. So you've seen the circuit design and uh, from the output of the implementation, it seems like everything is working fine. But of course, the code will not run by just writing it down and uh, hoping that everything will be okay. You need verification. And uh, for verification, um, there are two videos. One is about writing the test bench itself. And the second video is about self-checking test bench. So please have a look at these two videos.